Well, it's funny that we're talking about joy because that book, this book was actually birthed out of a place that I felt a little devoid of joy mm. and a, a little lonely. I had gone from this, you know, 100 mile an hour career to the stillness of sort of I stepped into a caretaking role. I was turning 50 and I felt I felt a little forgotten. I was I was not clear on my purpose. I was flailing and it was birthed out of a beginning of feeling those feelings and then working with, you know, through that, talking with friends and then being really on purpose to figure out who I was at this season in my life. Hmm. So what about the circumstances you're walking through at that particular time and, and looking at the the calendar as far as reaching that that time period what is it that made you feel a bit despondent about that? Well, I so much of my identity was wrapped around into the accolades of a career. And then I had stepped, we had we moved and we purchased a property where my parents live next door to us. And my mother-in-law moved into the house and we have a teenager. And I stepped into a caretaking role. And it's, it's not probably one of the top of my spiritual gifts in life. So I was working, I, I felt like, God had forgotten the other gifts I had, and I was in this role that I wasn't good at. And I don't know how else to explain. I think most, there's so many women hit that pivot point in life. Our kids are older, our careers have changed, and we we lose identity in who we are. So it was a journey back to figuring that out. Mm. Would you describe it? And we hear the phrase "midlife crisis." Would you describe it in that in those terms? You know, I joke that when men have a midlife crisis, they go and buy a red sports car. But when women do it, we just stare in the mirror and cry that our our skin is melting and we're not sleeping through the night and we have hormonal shifts and we just it's so different. I think for women that it is for men. But as I started thinking about this midlife crisis, I realized there is no midlife to God. God does not look at us and go, oh right, gosh, right. thank you so well, much for coming. What would be the number? Right. I, I mean, how do you figure you that out? I mean, none. only he knows the number right. Right. of our days. Mm-hmm. No, so. and I don't think he ever looks at us and, and hands you a, a ticket and goes, oh, thank you so much for coming. Sit over there, watch some Netflix. I'll call you when your time's up. He calls us to go all out all the way, no matter your number. Yeah. So how did you really come to a a point of really embracing what you were seeing and experiencing as a new chapter in your life what what did God do in order to kind of set things right well I started really talking with my friends I started talking about the women in my life group and I started talking to my best friends and we were all experiencing similar things and I sat back and I thought you know we're the smartest we have ever been. We have more wisdom than ever before. We've experienced more. We've had more heartache, more, more wins. We've, we are the best we have ever been in our lives. And yet we are more pulled back than ever. It doesn't make any sense that in our fifties, when we're the best we've ever been, maybe not physically, but you know, the rest of us, the best we've ever been, our faith is the deepest, all of that. We sort of hand the microphone to somebody in their 20s, and I joke that she doesn't even know what chin hairs are yet. You know, like, why are we doing such a thing when we uh, we have so much to give the world? It's not the time for us to step back. So what would you say or how would you describe that relationship with the younger generation? Because we, you know, we do hear that, that those of us who in, are in our 50s or 60s or older or whatever, it's kind of like time to pass the baton. And to a certain extent, I mean, I get that. I understand that. I think it's great to prepare the next generation for leadership, for what God would do with them. But, I mean, I refuse to believe God's finished with, Absolutely. you know, with those of us who are in our 50s and 60s and Absolutely. beyond. Absolutely. Um, and I think that it has to be a combination of that we have got to, um, the people in their 20s have to really start seeking, 20s and 30s, seeking the wisdom of those that are older. And those that are older have to also pivot and seek some wisdom from the youth. You know, it's it, in business, in life, in all of those things. I think we absolutely need each other. I don't think scripture tells us to, to break apart at any point. Um, we truly are meant for community and community of, of different ages.